I'm confused by this. Ambernick releases a new handheld every other week, so that's no surprise. Its most beloved line of handhelds, I guess we can call them the XX series, sat alone and unbothered for a really long time, being my go-to recommendation for a cheap emulation handheld. Ambernick did the Chinese handheld thing, and they released a million versions of the 35XX. There's the baseline 35XX, then there's the 28XX, which is worse. There's the 35XX Plus, which gives a bit of a performance boost over the original. It was rough at the time of release, but has since gotten better with firmware updates. Then there's the 35XXH, which is the same as the Plus, but H. I mean, horizontal. I didn't review this one because it was too much like the original Plus. It was even announced like the same week the Plus came out. Then more recently came the RG35XXSP. It's the same as the Plus, but clamshell. Its close resemblance to the GBA SP does help its popularity. Now, just a few weeks after the release of the SP, is the RG40XXH. This is now the first of the 40XX series, with an H signifying that it's horizontal, which implies that there will be others eventually. So 40 is higher than 35. So this is the first of the new series, right? This is exciting. This is the first generation of the next Ambernick handhelds, except that it's not like at all. Literally, the exact same CPU, the same GPU, the same RAM, the same firmware. It's the exact same everything as the original RG35XX Plus. The only difference here is the larger screen. Four inches is big for a handheld, but even the resolution is the same. I guess this is a review of the same device that I reviewed countless times, except now it's horizontal. There are some updated capabilities of these XX series handhelds that we could talk about. There's also some stuff going on with Ambernick that I'd like to talk about. Some stuff that I'm not too happy about and some that you shouldn't be either. This video is sponsored by Factor. Hey, it's me. People say that I yell a lot in these ads, so I'm gonna give you a little Factor ASMR today. Let's make a Factor meal. Wow, how delicious does that look and also sound? Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all that you have to do is eat and enjoy. Skip the grocery store, prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef curated dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. And they've got smoothies and juices and wellness shots too. Oh yeah, that's good. Sometimes I forget to eat, so having factor around has kept me a little bit healthier. You can just pop it in hot beans. Oh. You can pop it in the microwave if you're in a real hurry. I usually take the seven minutes to make it in the oven. And you can try it for yourself by going to factor75.com and use code YOUNGRY50 for all 50% off of your first Factor box and 20% off of your next month of meals. That's factor75.com. Use code YOUNGRY50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box and 20% off of your next month of orders. Wow, isn't that a deal? Good thing they sent me six of these. I really like the RG35XX SP, so we're off to a great start, I guess. Really, the only thing that's different here is the look and the form factor. So I guess we'll start with those. It's certainly premium looking and feeling. The screen is large, but the resolution is the same 640 by 480 pixel resolution that we've seen for years on these. It's also just an IPS screen, which looks great, don't get me wrong. But again, it's the same screen we've been seeing for years. The RGB on these thumbsticks looks ridiculous, just like it does on every device they're putting it on these days. Am I old and out of touch? Or are RGB thumbsticks lame as hell? 
I like to just immediately turn them off or turn them to a static color whenever I can. You can do that in the settings. There's different animation options. And one of them makes it so any direction you point the thumbstick in will light up. I thought that was the best of all of them and it dims the light enough so it's not too distracting. The thumbsticks are tiny and don't have much travel, even less than a Switch thumbstick. It's the same thumbstick, I just think it sits lower. So it feels like there's a little less travel, only slightly. The shoulder buttons are all clicky, no analog here, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't think you'll be needing analog for any of these systems this can play. The face buttons are not that clicky, especially compared to the SP. The start and select buttons are on the right side, which is kind of weird to get used to. The D-pad is the nice Ambernick style D-pad, not too stiff feeling. And I didn't notice any issues with the D-pad favoring any angles, which has been a problem on XX devices in the past. I guess you'd want to get this over the SP if you like the horizontal form factor more, or if you absolutely need thumbsticks and stacked shoulder buttons, even though both of these devices can only really play up to N64 and DS comfortably, maybe some PSP. So you don't really need that many shoulder buttons for that. Having at least one analog stick is helpful for Dreamcast games and two is helpful for N64 games. But honestly, I was fine playing those on the SP and that only had a D-pad, no thumbsticks. The convenience of playing a clamshell was more important to me than having analog thumbsticks. Plus, it had some pretty decent functionality to adapt the D-pad to an analog stick. You had to press the power button in once, which was weird and not very intuitive. But once you know that that's the thing that does it, it's really not so bad. I could talk about all of the different systems that this is capable of and how they all play, but it's the exact same as the SP, and I already did a video on that. But I guess I can just plow through some of the notable ones and what's different here. It can play everything all the way up to N64, Dreamcast, DS, and PSP. Whatever you do, run the games from the RA game section. The game room section makes the games run bad. PSP requires some finagling to make it not stretched, and it runs generally slow. Some games will be fine, some won't. N64 is okay. Some graphical glitches and some weird overscan on the top that wasn't present on the SP, unless I missed something. Mario looks weird, like it has HDR on or something. You can switch the core to Moopin, which will have Mario looking better, but more demanding games like Perfect Dark will perform much worse in Moopin. So it's a trade-off. N64 is a little disappointing. I guess it's nice that it's even capable of that, but I'll ask again, why is this the 40XX if it's not gonna perform better at all? DS does work surprisingly well. None of these XX devices are touch screens, but having a thumbstick does help with DS emulation. The left stick controls the cursor and the right stick click controls the touch. I feel like that could be a little more intuitive, but it's better than nothing. The triggers can swap the screens and the screen layout too. So it makes it surprisingly intuitive to play DS games on the one big screen. I don't love it as much as the RG Cube, which has a perfectly square screen, making DS games and 3DS games look surprisingly good. But this is way cheaper than the RG Cube, and it's fine to play with one screen at a time. It, it makes it fine. Dreamcast and N64 and other systems that require an analog stick to move just work with the analog stick on here. On the SP, you have to press the power button one time to switch the D-pad into analog stick mode. So this is a bit better because you just have an actual analog stick. SNES and pretty much everything else is the same as the SP, which means it's fine. I did have to change the aspect ratio for SNES like I did on the SP. I did notice that every system that uses RetroArch as its emulator has a fast forward option. You just have to hold down the M button and press R2. It's a toggle, so you don't have to hold it. But this is very useful for cutscenes or turn-based games with a lot of menus. Whoa. You can fast forward Sonic. So I guess that's everything that's different. But I want to talk about something that's changed since my SP review, and that's ports. People have been using these devices to play the Linux versions of their PC games. I dabbled in this a little bit in the SP video, but I was using the MUOS custom firmware. On MUOS, it's called Portmaster. 
It's pretty awesome. And there seems to be a lot of growing support for it recently. Now, Amber Nick is showing it off on their own OS. And I'm pretty sure it's still called Portmaster, but they just call it Ports. The SP also has a firmware update on their website that will do all of the same stuff. It's a really cool feature that I'm glad is included. There is limited compatibility just because of the sheer nature of running PC ports on a low powered Linux machine. Luckily, Retro Game Core has a video and a written guide on it, finally. So it should be relatively easy to set up. You go to portmaster.games slash games for information on each individual games that are supported. Just because it's on this site doesn't guarantee that it's gonna work. In fact, I couldn't get anything to work. I got Gravity Circuit and Half-Life on here and both of them just open and crash immediately. If you see me playing the new Turtles game and Celeste in this B-roll, it's because Amber Nick gave me this device with those games on here already. However, herein lies the controversy. Many of these handhelds, whether from Anbernic or Powkitty or MiU, they all usually come with a micro SD card filled with games. Some people love that. I really don't because it's the one thing that makes them a questionable purchase. I guess we could plead a little bit of ignorance because they don't really disclose which systems that you buy come with games and which ones don't. In the past, I used to get ones with games on them and I used to get ones without games on them and I never really knew which one I was gonna get. I thought, Maybe they were just putting games on there because I was a reviewer and they wanted me to review it with games. But now, pretty much all of them come with games on them. I prefer if none of them came with games because it's way more legitimate to just put your own ripped games on here. Companies that distribute these consoles here in America run the risk of getting shut down. These can be considered contraband Game Boys. Plus, the ROMs they put on here are usually bad ROMs anyway. It'd be better if you just rip the ROMs yourself and put them on here. We kind of turn a blind eye though, because they're all retro games. None of them are in production anymore. Some are even impossible to get these days. Well, with the inclusion of Portmaster, you see where I'm going with this? Ambernick put a couple of modern games on here, games that you can just go out and purchase right now. Games where developers are still making money, some of them, even indie games, small indie developers, getting just blatantly stolen from. I got an unprovoked email from Ambernick that said, please note that these three games, Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, Shovel Knight, and Celeste are only available in the review samples and the actual shipped machines do not have these three games. Therefore, there's no need to display them during the review videos. Thank you. I tweeted that part of the email and many of you pointed out why include them in the device if they don't want me to include them in the review? It's a clear backpedal, which would be fine if it were even a backpedal at all. You see, because I was also sent this email that a consumer got about their RG35XXSP purchase, saying that there's new firmware out that can play all of those games that they told me weren't on there. On top of that, Joey's Retro Handheld found these games in the SP's firmware that's available on Ambernick's website. Now, of course it's possible that they reverse these plans, but I don't exactly trust Ambernick to roll this back completely. In my last review of the RG Cube, I mentioned that there were screen issues that Ambernick claimed were only sent out to reviewers. That was quickly proven false. Ambernick has since emailed me and said that they would replace Eunice with those issues. I did have to ask them twice. They ignored me the first time and just changed the subject. It was very strange. That tells us that their quality assurance is bad. But I also know from hearing from other people that their customer service is not the best. So there's plenty of reasons to not trust Ambernick. I don't wanna like bully them because a lot of these companies are terrible. I like the products that they make, but every time you purchase one of these handhelds, you're pretty much gambling your $70. That's right, this is only $70. It's the exact same price as the SP. Had I known this was essentially the same device as the Plus and the SP, and even the old 35XXH, I don't think I would have even covered this, just like I didn't cover the RG35XXH. Not much is different here, like at all. The hardware is all the same. The real story here is how much the firmware has grown. When I first tried the Plus, 
it was pretty bad. There was a slight spec bump that allowed for more powerful systems than the base RG35XX, but those extra systems didn't perform well and there was no custom firmware to make things work well like there was on the baseline model. Now, the stock firmware runs pretty great, but even if you don't like the stock experience, there are a ton of custom firmware options now. Ambernic has built a platform with the XX series, but that doesn't mean they need to release so many devices that all have marginal differences. And why call this the 40XXH if it's got the exact same internals as the 30XXH? It sounds like it's more powerful when it's not at all. It's just a different design. That's it. The screen is bigger, I guess. That is so not enough to warrant an entirely new number. That's just confusing. I'm trying to only cover devices when they're exciting or different enough. The problem here is that there was a lot of talk around this device for some reason. It seemed like a big deal. Making it a bigger number really did help sell it. It was just a tinge of false advertising. The problem is I built my whole week around reviewing this only to realize that it's nothing special. Unless, of course, you really need those thumbsticks. In which case, boy, do I have some news for you. So what do you guys think about the RG35XXSP? No, God, that's, what do you, what do you think about Amberdick? And the 40XXH, or the other one, or any of them, they're all the same. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. One thing that I left out in this video is the HDMI. It has a mini HDMI out. I don't like the HDMI out that these have. It usually performs pretty bad. It's not like docking your Steam Deck or your Nintendo Switch. It's always like a little buggy. It does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you can connect a controller through Bluetooth, but it doesn't work that great. It's extremely finicky. So I wouldn't buy this if you're excited for that part. Anyway, we got new videos here all of the time. Next video is, I think, on the Asus ROG Ally X. My review for that might be a little late because I like to take my time on it and I like to upload towards the end of the week. And I was busy working on this one and I'm a little behind on my other stuff. Go to twitch.tv slash wolfden and you know what? We'll probably play with the ROG Ally in the next stream. You can be there and talk to me about it and I'll mess with it however you want me to mess with it. But the most important thing you can do to help support this channel is subscribe here so you know when every new video goes live and you can be there and watch it and click the notification and share this video with a friend, a friend who is trying to get themselves a brand new retro handheld. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week. See you later. I'm going to go port some games. Yoo